Kohlberg's Six Stages of Moral Development Before we dive into the discussion on the key concepts of Lawrence Kohlberg's Six Stages of Moral Development, let me provide a very brief background on Kohlberg and his theory. Needless to say, this is important so that we can put the discussion on Kohlberg's six stages of moral development in a proper context. In this way, we can make more sense of the topic under discussion. First of all, Lawrence Kohlberg was a professor of education and social psychology at Harvard University. He began as a developmental psychologist and then moved to the field of education. He was influenced by the Swiss psychologist, John Piaget, who was famous for his theory on the moral development of children. Kohlberg was particularly well known for his theory of moral development, which he developed through his extensive research on the topic at Harvard Center for Moral Education. As is well known, Kohlberg's theory of moral development was derived from his interviews with young boys distributed from early childhood to late adolescence. In these interviews, Kohlberg asked the participants to respond to hypothetical ethical dilemmas, such as a man contemplating on stealing a drug to save his dying wife because he cannot afford the drug after exhausting all possibilities to pay for it. The result of the interviews showed a pattern of responses which suggested a progression in moral reasoning. Thus, was born the theory of moral development, which, for Kohlberg, is the basis for ethical behavior. Kohlberg thought that moral development involves a specific process and time, and that people progressed in their moral reasoning through a series of stages. It is important to note that Kohlberg followed the development of moral judgment beyond the ages originally studied by Piaget, who claimed that logic and morality develop through constructive stages. Kohlberg expanded considerably on this groundwork, determining that the process of moral development was principally concerned with justice and that its development continued throughout the lifespan, even spawning dialogue of philosophical implications of his research. The result of the study allowed Kohlberg to come up with his famous six stages of moral development, which could be generally classified into three levels, namely, pre-conventional level, conventional level, and post-conventional level. As we can see, the six stages of moral development are divided into three levels and each level has two stages, each of which has a corresponding social orientation. Let me briefly explain each stage below. Preconventional level The preconventional level is concerned primarily with the consequences of one's action. According to Kohlberg, Persons in this level simply pursue their own interest while at the same time avoid sanctions. Here, children base their judgments on external consequences, for example, punishment and reward. Hence, at this level, obedience is based on authority. As we can see, morality in the preconventional level is externally controlled and children behave accordingly, that is, accept and believe the rules imposed by authority figures, such as parents, teachers, and community elders. Hence, children in the preconventional level have not yet internalized the society's conventions about what is right and wrong. Instead, they focus largely on external consequences that certain actions engender, such as, again, reward and punishment. As already mentioned, there are two stages in this level. The first stage is concerned with punishment and authority. Here, the child behaves according to socially acceptable rules or norms because she is told to do so by some authority figure like her parents, teachers, pastors or clergy and elders in the community. According to Kohlberg, the child obeys the rules to avoid punishment. The second stage is concerned with one's own interest or advantage. Kohlberg observes that children behave in the right way because they thought that doing so brings practical results. Hence, as Kohlberg sees it, 
one obeys the norms because it is beneficial to oneself. Here, moral decisions are made based on the rewards one can receive. More importantly, moral reasoning in the second stage shows a limited interest in others and, as a result, concern for others is based on instrumental reason, for example, the scratch my back and I'll scratch yours mentality, rather than on loyalty or intrinsic respect. Conventional level If in the pre-conventional level the child is concerned primarily with the consequences of his own action, in the conventional level the child is concerned more with societal relationship with emphasis on social conformity. As we can see, in the conventional level, there is a shift from self-interest to relationship with other people and social systems. Here, according to Kohlberg, the individual strives to support rules that are set forth by others, such as parents, peers, and the government to win their approval or to maintain social order. Thus, in the conventional level, children continue to accept the rules of authority figures not because of self-interest, but because they thought that behaving according to said rules will necessarily ensure positive relationships and societal order. It is interesting to note that according to Kohlberg, rules and conventions are somewhat rigid in this level, but individuals seldom question said rules and conventions. This is because, again, behaving according to these rules and conventions ensure positive relationships and societal order. And since people in this level are more concerned with the opinions of others, moral decisions, therefore, are made based on what the others may say. According to Kohlberg, the third and fourth stages of moral development belong to this level. The third stage is concerned with peer and group acceptance. This stage, according to Kohlberg, is characterized by a behavior that seeks to do that which gains the approval of peers. Hence, Kohlberg says that the reactions of others are somehow the basis of decision-making and behavior. For this reason, peer and group acceptance become the rule of the day and that an individual behaves accordingly to maintain good relationships with others. The fourth stage is concerned with legalistic orientation. This stage, according to Kohlberg, is characterized by obedience to the law, responding to the obligations of duty, and respect of those in authority. Hence, this stage emphasizes the upholding of the law, order, doing one's duty, and obeying social norms. Kohlberg believes that this stage is important because there is a higher value in obeying the law than by simply seeking the approval of one's peers. As we can see, moral reasoning in this stage goes beyond the need for individual approval that characterized stage 3. Hence, in stage 4, children blindly obey the law because of their importance to maintain a well-functioning society. Post-conventional level The post-conventional level, which is focused on the common good and universal moral principles, is the most challenging level. According to Kohlberg, persons at this level make judgment based on impartial universal moral principles, even when these judgments may conflict with societal standards. Hence, in this level, the individual's sense of morality is defined in terms of abstract principles and values. For this reason, individuals now believe that some laws are unjust, thus, they must be repelled, if not eliminated. According to Kohlberg, the post-conventional level is also characterized by a growing realization that individuals are separate entities from society and that they may disobey rules that are inconsistent with their own beliefs and principles. As we can see, for Kohlberg, post-conventional individuals live by their own ethical principles, which typically include basic human rights, such as right to life, liberty, and justice. Kohlberg also notes that post-conventional individuals view rules as useful, but are always changeable, rather than absolute dictates that must be obeyed without question. Hence, in this level, laws and rules will only be considered a significant mechanism for maintaining harmony and order in the society. 
According to Kohlberg, the fifth and sixth stages belong to this level. The fifth stage is concerned with the common good. In fact, as Kohlberg says, this stage is anchored on the understanding of social mutuality and genuine interest in the welfare of others. Here, laws and rules are considered as social contracts and these are for the good of the community and for equal protections of individual rights. For this reason, laws can only be accepted or approved relative to the common good of the society. The sixth and last stage is concerned with respect for universal principle, such as the principles of justice, dignity, and equality. That is why, for Kohlberg, the basis of one's action is not just the common good or a social contract, but a deeper universal principles. Hence, according to Kohlberg, moral decision is not just based on the laws and rules of the society, but on one's conscience. Now, as already hinted above, individuals grow and develop in progression, that is, from one stage to another. And it is important to note that for Kohlberg, an individual cannot just jump from stage 1 to, say, stage 4 without passing through stages 2 and 3. Thus, for Kohlberg, one's moral development is linear and is ordered hierarchically.